in this video, we get ourselves into a spot of bother. Yeah, unhook the winch. And we continue our journey across the Nullarbor to a remote section of the WA coastline to see Twilight Cove and tackle the Telegraph track. This episode is part of our 2023 Design and Built Tour series, where we attempt a four week, 10,000 kilometre journey through spectacular coastal and outback Australia to tackle one of the most remote tracks in the world, the Canning Stock Route. In the previous episode, we started our trip from Melbourne, checked out Coffin Bay and Port Lincoln on the Air Peninsula, then we teed off across the Nullarbor. He like runs up to it, it's like a Happy Gilmore happy every Gilmore, shot. Yeah. We also had a catastrophic engine failure, which meant we had to cram all our gear into four cars instead of five, and now we pick up where we left off, somewhere across the Nullarbor. As we made our way across the Nullarbor, our seasoned gaggle of golfers continued to play well and truly under par on the world's longest golf course. <laughs> that one's definitely <laughs> making it a video. <laughs> Stopped in at the iconic Ookla pub for dinner before heading into the Delissa Sand Hills to camp for the night. In true touring form, we arrived in the dead of night and had no idea what was surrounding us. But we woke up to this. A breathtaking set of sand dunes right on the WA SA border. And after a quick brekkie, we decided to explore this stunning part of the world. I think we're heading over there to the dunes. Bit of a predicament, didn't quite make it up, reversed out the wrong way. We got Devo here, he's gonna film me. And I'm on the winch. Nah. You got your lockers on? Front locker? Less bulldozer, I'd say. 
I reckon you're pushing shit uphill. I reckon you just got to go out backwards and get it again from the beginning. Right hand down. Right hand down. Yeah, unhook the winch. Go, go fast. Just what? Unhook the winch. Just, just, just wait. We just got to get this right. Get the cable away. Maybe you mean. I reckon just go straight ahead. Just go straight ahead and get that tire up. This is one of those scenarios where the shot doesn't do the situation justice. The car was at its tipping point and you can hear from the expression in everyone's voice it was a stressful situation. Um, just wait, just wait. Let's just get it right. Get on it. Someone jump. <laughs> wow, this is more than a shit show than we needed. Yeah. Easy, 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 easy. Just chill. Just slow. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Now you can come out. Just jump out of the way, Dad. Yeah, pretty scary, that was. Good content for YouTube, I guess, but I uh, didn't really love it. I mean, you could see the car tipping, couldn't you? Yeah, you didn't. Heart rate's up. Heart <laughs> rate right, was high. <laughs> yep. Having guys on the edge, you know it's serious. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, I mean, obviously, really irresponsible. You never do that in a rescue situation. Should have had this camera on while I was filming that. I uh, got in a bit of a hairy situation. It was like a nothing little Sanji and I reverse into a really awkward spot. And, uh... Yeah, to get it out, the car was like teetering on the edge. Jesus, that's the most scared I've been in this. Like more scared than gunshot and you can see I'm still buzzing. So thanks fellas for having my back. We wanted to get to the beach on the other side of the dunes, which meant we had to find a path through the soft sand, which proved to be a little trickier than we initially thought. Backwards. Just easy backwards. Point of view, you really haven't done much sand driving before, but you have a lot of berries. So we've got the peanut gallery up there. Let's do it. Classic, so what we're doing is just getting a drone shot of me sending this June. We already got a shot, but then to be an influencer, you need mad sick drone shots. Then Brian was gonna follow me, but we managed to get the 80s stuck. Got Devo's recovery services in the old 100 series, pulling us out. It's got a jacked up FTE in it. Dry 
drive irresponsibly on the channel. Uh, I don't want to set a bad example for the young'uns, but sometimes you just got to give it the berries. Why the thermo still going? Yeah, I mean, it got a little bit hot when you give it the berries in a situation like that, where it's necessary to give it the berries. After a few hours of this and driving around aimlessly like this, we finally got to the other side. And we finally got back on the track which took us out to the Nullarbor, but not before stopping to see some history. I actually heard that it was constructed the same era as the pyramids. Maybe earlier. Maybe earlier. Same guys. Same guys, yep. I think it was the Egyptians' holiday home. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get on this channel, nothing but facts. That's no good. If this is you, do yourself a favour, give yourself an uppercut. It's not good. So we just spent a night at the dunes on the border of WA and SA. Really cool, I haven't done anything like that before. Got my four-wheel drive stuck a few times. And we're heading to Cockleberry, so another three or four hours down the highway. And uh, yeah, I think we're gonna try camp there before nightfall. Probably not gonna happen. We're, we are uh, just a, a crew of faffers, so let's see how we go. We're about to head in the dunes for four days to get to Esperance. We've just refueled. Last fuel for a couple of days. This one hurt. Ouch. We're about 700k through the dunes, so hopefully we make it. I've got to really just be careful and not not drive uh, too spiritedly. Literally just at the back of the Cockle Bitty pub. We were on the Telegraph track in WA, which spans 750 kilometers from Cocklebiddy to Esperance. The track would take us past Bill Bunya sand dunes, which are some of the most spectacular sand dunes in Australia. We were planning on making it to the breathtaking Twilight Cove on the first night, which once again saw us driving late into the night. After a few hours driving, we ended up hitting the sand and then we set up camp for the night to start the evening's cooker. Second meal cooking on induction tonight. Proper uh, meal. Giving them a 30% limit on my 220 amp hours. 36% limit. Something so stingy with your 12 volt. Oh, like <laughs> it doesn't want to go below 65% and everyone knows a lithium battery is good for 20%. It's because I have fridges and freezers to run everyone. Ooh. Nick, what's your thoughts on the one versus two burner induction? Because a lot of setups only have the one. What meals have you cooked on one? Yeah. What could you cook yeah. on one? Reheat a bolognese. Yeah. Alright, so you got one meal. Like a one burner can do one meal. Reheat a bolognese, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Devo's asking me to get grinder sparks at the uh, at Bunnings. He's asking me to cook one side of every one of these to man. be like this. I reckon you could do it. Yeah, I mean it's possible, man, but I feel like if this is another headlight fluid, like surely this is not a thing. He's like half power. Message for Prue. Nick can cook. All you ever hear when you cook with induction is, how much percent have we got left? <laughs> <laughs> we use a little bit more than the cutoff that we were allowed by, by Richard, but um, I think it's worth it and we bought another 10% by giving him a small bowl. After a delicious induction cooked meal with half cooked chorizo, we discussed the big issues before packing Earlier. it in for the night. Regardless of the radi radioactiveness, you could carry the amount of waste from out power that would power the whole, the whole of Australia in a year. So, so people are always... Day 
day five on tour and we just camped at Twilight Cove, which is directly south of Cocklebitty. We're gonna have an explore this morning and then just start meandering along to Esperance. Oh. These are the cliffs that we came to see. It's a little bit of a dog leg from the main track, but if you're in the area, it's well worth it. Once we were done sightseeing, we continued down the telegraph track to the next stop, Bill Bunya Sand Dunes. Line down from Cocklebitty all the way down to Esperance. It's pretty slow going, 20 km an hour stuff, but should get rewarded with some nice beach runs in the middle of nowhere with no one around. Pretty good. 28 degrees outside. Delicious. Good on these ones to switch up cars. Take some of the boredom away, especially on these long tracks. See what you do and don't like. Generally ends up costing you more money. He's like, oh, I like that suspension. Oh, that's pretty good. So if I find anything a bit good about the barrel, I'll uh, let you know. Once again, we found ourselves driving into the night before we made camp. Tonight on Design and Built, we'll be introducing you to one of our canopy features. This is really simple. It's a must have for everyone at home. Now, a lot of people go camping to get away from the city, but sometimes you just like a couple of little extra creature comforts. It's really important to remember that only classics will be played on this projector. Such films such as Shawshank Redemption, Top Gun Maverick, you get the idea. Maybe an episode of Design and Built. Maybe an episode of Design and Built. Who knows? We have a little tripod, like my camera tripod in this case. We get our little projector. I don't want to name names, but this one's from Anaconda, $129. Not a sponsor, could be. What kind of stuff can you fit in? Uh, just a USB and an HDMI, I believe. Oh, HDMI, great. Turn my King Chrome head torch, one of the brightest head torches known to man. Actually a sponsor, great sponsor. What am I... All you need is some extension cables from eBay, not a sponsor, could be. And then you set up your canopy to house the cables or to take them in. In this case, we've got a 12 volt socket. Run it all the way. The size of this thing, that's... Someone else has come to watch the Oh movie. my God. Is that a moth? Is it a moth or a flying horse? Cool Runnings, uh, one of the classics for my younger viewers. If you haven't watched it, make sure you go watch it. They're from Jamaica, they have a bobsled team. <laughs> Feel the rhythm. Feel the run. <laughs> come on Jamaica, it's bobsled time. Everyone knows. Dinner, movies and a fire.
day six on tour. This is the reality every morning. Well, not every morning, but some mornings. Just out here in a beautiful office, transferring all the data for you guys. And on the other side, Steve Owen and Dick. Basically this. Oh, there's an egg in there, everyone. Day six today, we're somewhere southern remote WA. Haven't seen someone for a few days now, which is pretty cool. Haven't had cell reception for a few days, which is probably even better. Do it. We're starting off with a spectacular drive along the cliff tops, and then we do about 60 k's of the same sort of rocky track that we did yesterday, and then we step onto the beach. So we should be fa moving faster by the end of the day. On the next episode, we continue along the coastline to the stunning Bilbunya sand dunes. Then we head on to Esperance where our trip starts going awfully pear-shaped. Um, and he said it was just absolutely just wet, just so wet out there.